Hey, what's up everybody? Frosty here, uh, coming at you with a special Hand of the Week video today. Uh, as you can see, I'm joined by a fellow Team Online Pro, fellow Poker School Online coach, uh, X Flix. How's it going, Flix? Hey, Frosty. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah, how are you doing? Ah, doing good, thanks. Uh, Felix and I, we talk a decent amount of strategy on Skype. I think uh, uh, we play some some of the same games and have... Yeah. You know, a sim fairly similar mindset towards how the games uh, should be played, though we do have differing opinions here and there. So it's it's uh, it's good to talk strategy with people like that. And um, I hope you guys are going to like this format. Let me know what you think. Uh, basically, we're going to look at two hands that Felix played, uh, and we're going to go through and talk about them street by street. Um, I'll kind of draw the action, and, and Flix will give his opinion, and uh, it will kind of go from there. Yeah, and sounds good. We'll, you know, we'll talk about the hand in a vacuum, but we'll also try to deviate uh, and, you know, talk about general game theory and and just having a solid game plan for for the spots that we're gonna face. So yeah, let me know what you think of this format, and for now I'm gonna leave it at that, and uh, we'll just jump into the hand. Here we go. So that's the hand that I played, uh, the one-two zoom tables. Uh, it's pretty much readless, no infos on the opponents. The opener here. Uh, open comes from middle position. Is a wreck. I know he's a wreck, but no other info than that. No, no particular stats or nothing. No particular reads or any history at all. So I go ahead yeah. and flat nines. Yeah. So folds to us in the big um, player four folded right there. Right? That's just like a, a replayer glitch. It looks like. Yeah. The, it shows yeah. people that are not actually in the hand. So he's out of the question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it looks, you know, he's got a, more than a full stack, he opens 3x, I think it's safe to assume he's reg, and like you said, you kind of already knew that, so I yeah. don't think there's any merit to ever 3-betting this hand. And yeah, I wouldn't do that I either, think yeah. Goldie is just too nitty against pretty much anyone, so not much to talk about pre there, I think this is Absolutely. always going to be the call. And flop Jin, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, flop a set, easy game so far. Obviously going to start by checking. Start off by checking, like checking my entire range in that spot, I guess. And just have him, you know, stab or make a C bet, and he gladly does. So, what's your approach in this spot? Would you? I mean, obviously we crush the board somehow, so there's not really much to have for our opponent in relation to the board texture. And also, given that he opens from middle position, I assume he's going to be more Broadway heavy and Ace X heavy. Um, so, do you see merit in check raising in that spot, or would you check call? Yeah, so, I mean, in spots like this, like, I, whenever I'm thinking about going for a check raise, I, I kind of think about what could I have for value and what could I have for bluffs. So, obviously, on a flop like this, we're going to have all sets for value. We're going to have 6-7 suited. Um, but I don't think I'm going to have too many bluffs on a flop this try. Like, all my bluffs are going to be, like, like maybe, like, would be semi-bluffs, like yeah. Jack-10. Um, maybe, like... Um, maybe like a six of diamonds, you know, something like that. But when it comes down to it, I'm just not going to have very many bluffs here. So I think if I check yeah. raise, uh, I'm going to get quite a bit of credit for having a super strong hand, and we're just going to see a ton of folds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think I think my overall game plan in these spots is usually going to be to check call and then have more of a check raising range on the turn. Yeah, uh, I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and from that perspective, absolutely, but also from the perspective that I feel like if I check raise this, he's just not going to, like, comment combinatorially speaking, he's not going to have many hands that he can actually continue against the check raise with on this board. Obviously, he can continue with all the over pairs, but, I mean, he's going to he's gonna toss all the ace kings and ace queens and king queens and king jacks and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I think a lot of good things come from, from check calling, like... There's there's not too many hands that we potentially lose value from, and yeah. like you said, I mean, even if he doesn't have ace x, um, if an ace rolls off or a king's rolls off, I think you know he's probably gonna bluff at it. I think our hand looks a lot like like a one pair type hand, like anything from five six suited to pocket queens type thing. Right. Um. So yeah, I think I think we're just gonna basically be able to bluff catch on a lot of turns. Slash go for check raises on some turns yeah. and etc. This is like the perfect turn card I was I was looking at here. It's like you know, King of Hearts should hit him a decent amount at least from his middle uh, yeah, position. Oh yeah, totally. 
range perspective and he goes ahead and barrels it which I expect him to do quite a bit with uh, a big chunk of his range not only the kings but you know all sorts of draws and semi bluffs and picked up draws picked up flush draws and you know straight draws and even some complete air balls like you know maybe even barrel ace queen or ace jack some of the time so I guess I was gonna just check and then decide if I was gonna check raise or check call. What what would your approach be on that turn card? Would you go for a check raise or would you rather check call now again? Um, yeah. So I agree with what you said about what his range looks like. I mean, he's he's got all set still. He's got he's got king x now. He's got air balls that are gonna barrel that card pretty much always. Um and He's also got yeah some picked up equity with uh, with flush draws as well. I, I think at this point I want to go for a check raise. I think the board's getting wetter. I think we can extract value from lots of lots of semi bluffs. I mean he's probably double barreling jack ten. You know he might fold that. He might call. Uh, if he's picked up some like some backdoor hard draw, I don't want to give him a free card. Yeah. Um, if he's got his king, he might get stubborn and call, and then. If he's got like pocket fives or pocket eights, you know, we're just always getting a stack. We're like, I think if we check call here, we're just potentially missing a lot of value from worse sets. Um, we're not charging his hands that picked up equity. And I just, I mean, we're just going to let him check back a lot of rivers too. So I think check calling is probably a pretty big, big mistake at this point. Like, yeah, I, I just can't really think of too, too many reasons why I'd want to check call here. Well, I can I can tell you one later, but for now I I I did agree with you in that sense that I did go for a check raise. So, so I obviously had kind of the same approach in that spot. Uh but kind of, you know, the 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 way the hand went down in the end, it kind of made me think otherwise, but uh we can talk about that later well, on maybe. Well, I, I mean at this point, like like I was going back to the flop, like yeah, I'm not going to have too many bluffs by check raising that flop, but I, I can have a lot of bluffs on this turn. Given right. how wetter the board comes, like I'm gonna be floating that flop with like queen jack suited a bunch of the times. Right. Um, and now if I had queen jack of hearts, you know I might want to semi bluff that. I probably mm -hmm. would. Uh, same thing with jack ten of hearts, which turns into a pretty powerful semi bluff. Yeah. Um, I also just think that card's getting barreled so often that you know I might just go for a check raise with whatever, just because. I, yeah, I think he's just barreling that and could potentially fold a lot. So. I don't know. On this turn card, I I pick up a lot more hands that can be reasonable to bluff with. Basically, any like, you know, I could even be floating with like Ace Ten of Hearts. Like, I don't know. Long story short, there's a ton of bluffs I could potentially have by check raising here, which makes me definitely want to check raise like a super value hand like this. Right. Um, right. If the money goes in, I mean, like it's kind of funny. If the money goes in, you're actually not really even happy about it anymore because villain can have six seven, he can have pocket kings, but yeah, I think you could possibly have lower sets and possibly have uh, some semi buffs as well yeah um, I mean I'm just never gonna check raise full the hand this strong obviously yeah. but no but I, I do like check raising yeah well so I did decide to check raise and he called and the river was the four of hearts and well you know according to my turn plan I was looking to now try and get value from some you know ace kings pocket aces and some lower sets that that still have strong enough hands to look me up or to call me on that river. Um, and uh, I shoved, which was kind of the natural inclination, uh, the way the hand went down. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I mean, what, do you, what are you thinking of his range at this point? Well, I'm pretty sure he's going to have all the sets in there. He's definitely going to have some ace kings and pocket aces in there. But he's also going to have quite a number of backdoor flushes in his range, given that, you know, I don't have a heart, there's two hearts out there. So other hands that are not including any king x or air balls that are calling the check raise just include mostly heart combos, right? I mean, all the ace x of hearts and queen jack of hearts, jack ten of hearts, all the combos that we just talked about that we could semi-bluff, I think he's likely to actually have when he barrels that turn as well. Um, and I think they're all going to yep. be in his, in his opening range anyways. So, yeah, yeah I guess... The, the, heart, the heart's not a good card for us. Yeah. Um, definitely not a good card. I was, he definitely has a lot of backdoor flush draws. Yeah. But I think we can take 6-7 out of his range. I think he just shoves that on the turn. He could, yeah. So, I think this is quite often going to be a set that just 
you know, just there has no real reason to shove the turn. Um, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of a reason if they think we're check raising semi bus, but I think like pocket eights and pocket fives is usually going to just be a call on the turn and then just just call off on any river. Right. Um, I think like pocket kings probably just shoves the turn as well because they don't block any other sets. Like that's the problem when you're sitting there with like bottom set, you really just have a bluff catcher. Yeah. So it doesn't make a ton of sense to just shove on the turn. But if you have like pocket kings, you know, you don't block any sets, you don't block two pair. Uh so I really think we can discount Kings and six seven, which yeah, kinda leaves us looking at a range of, of weaker sets. So, like we don't know much about this player. I mean, I think I think it would be a mistake to call with Ace King there, but I think people could do it, uh, for sure. Um that's kind of what I did. I, I ran the math on this in the poker stove. I, I can't pull it up right now, but I did it at some point. And uh, I ended up with a result that kind of worried me a little bit in hindsight um, about my value shove because I was seeing that, you know, I, I probably end up being in the plus EV zone if he ends up calling with ace king and aces in that spot. And if he doesn't call these hands, like if he if he ends up folding ace king, I'm actually really doing poorly against his his range overall because he's had he can have so many so many backdoor flushes uh, and only a couple of sets like fives and eights and maybe I don't know maybe eight nine suited really, but that's about it. And I'm blocking nine so. It's tough, and I, I was I was really I was a little bit shocked by the result that Stove showed me. The, and the one sec, the the only thing is, um, like we've invested so much money at this point. Yeah, I just don't really see how we can fold. Yeah. And I just so then we consider our options whether we shove or whether we check. And I mean, I don't really see the point of check calling. Like no, me neither. I I just don't really like he's never gonna be, be like. I don't think he's going to be with bluffs there. But in a worse hand, he could have like some weird bluffs. Some Jack Ten, but that's no. Nah, I don't. I don't think either. Yeah, yeah and it's like I mean, well, I mean, if we check, we pretty much have to call because he could maybe have some Jack Ten, and he could also maybe think that his pocket eights are now good. Yeah. If we check, so I don't really think we can check bold. So I think we kind of just have to shove here and and hope to hope to either <laughs> so play, you know yeah. somehow get called by worse or just win the pot. Makes me think that what would we do with pocket eights and pocket fives on this river? It gets even closer in that in that situation, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, it, it actually makes quite a big difference. I think. Yeah. I think, like, especially with like pocket fives, we can pretty happily just check fold this. That would, that that looks so awful on paper, but yeah, I agree. I think it kind of yeah. is a necessity. <laughs> yeah, I think nines is quite a bit quite a big difference here. Yeah. Um, just because eights and fives are certainly in his range. Right. Yeah. Well, he had a, a pretty easy call with the nuts, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and I came up, yeah. like, when I did this in Stove, I came up with so many backdoor flush combos that he can actually have, which kind of really was a shocker to see uh, when I did the analysis afterwards. But, yeah, as you say, I mean, it's probably a little bit too strong and too high up in our range to not be value shoving. But, again, we, we can't feel happy about it. It's like a spot where, you know, I didn't feel happy about shoving, but I just, you know, kind of is this... Thing I had well, to yeah, do. I mean, like against against a weaker player or like somebody who just doesn't fold. I mean, this is such a this is like it goes from like a marginal value shove on the river to like a slam super, dunk value yeah, shove. Yeah, absolutely. But then against like a nittier player, it's just it's, a gross spot. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I, I, you know, we talked about this hand on Skype a little bit too, and um, like his turn his turn call is absolutely correct. Even though I thought it, I thought it kind of wasn't at first. I thought his turn call was kind of bad, just given the price we laid him. But then, what we we did the math and it actually turns out against, fine. E even against a set, he's he's got a clear call. Yeah, he's got um, the gut shot as well. He's got a six with like any yeah. seven. So I, yeah, I don't know fine. how I feel about that flop C bet though. Given given what our range probably looks like, I mean, like I, it's never going to be terrible, I guess. But yeah, I think I, th I don't know if that C bet on the flop is is, is going to be profitable. Like our range there is going to be so many. So many pocket pairs. Yeah, you can um, expect a lot of. I guess there, he's right? going to have enough barreling opportunities that it that it's probably good. Right. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Anyways, yeah, interesting. And yeah, um, we talked about. Why don't we move on to the next one? Right. Sure. Whoops. No spoilers. <laughs> uh, right. So this one, uh, rather interesting spot against a recreational player. I know this guy's a recreational player. Uh, I don't have any any particular reads or stats on the guy, but. You know, just uh, given the fact that he has uh, 
a name that I don't recognize in the 200 NL zoom pools uh, is probably uh, I can I can I can make a decent assumption that he is likely to be more of a recreational player or like a recreational regular player. I don't know. Um, so okay. I, I assuming that he is a recreational player, King Ten suited. I mean, usually I would flat or three bet that hand. I would not be too happy about folding it. How do you play that against an unknown opponent or like a guy that you would feel could be more of a recreational guy? Um, against most regulars, um, unless they fold to a ton of three bets, I'm probably just folding against their under the gun opening range. Right. Against against a rec uh, an assumed recreational player like this sitting with eight hundred dollars, <laughs> um, there's just no way I'd ever fold. Yeah, um, I, I think I also prefer calling than than three betting. I mean, if we three bet and we don't really know how this guy plays, I mean, some people just click it back a lot. Uh, if if we have to three bet hold, fold this hand, that would just be downright brutal. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the downsides to calling are that he made it three x and. King 10 doesn't play tremendously post flop, although we are suited, so I think it's fine. We also open ourselves up, though, to being squeezed, which is pretty ugly. If, if it's true. small blind or big blind squeezes recreational calls, we kind of have to call, and then we a, a lot spot, of flops yeah. where we just get ourselves in trouble. But That's true. I, I think it's absolutely fine and, and probably the best play against this type of player. Yeah, so yeah, we see a flop heads up, I'm in position on him. And I flop the second nut flush draw. Yeah, good flop. Yeah, absolutely. And he close to pots it. Quite yeah, I mean, <laughs> you don't like you don't love to, like you don't love to see that sizing, but at the same time, you kind of do. Yeah, your fly dots seem to yeah. go up. It's like in um, that that particular situation, I was thinking, well, he most likely is a recreational player because regulars don't bet that kind of dry texture with that size mostly. Um, and I'm like, yeah, if I feel like he's more of a recreational guy, as you say, my implied dots go up by a big margin yeah i mean obviously only one thing to do um but just call here it's like against this type of player like i don't like floating is obviously less attractive I, I don't think we're gonna have very many opportunities to just steal this pot yeah but like you said our implied odds are just so good that it doesn't really matter and like i i would expect a recreational player to bet this flop Pretty. I mean, I would pretty much expect everybody to bet this flop close to 100 percent of the time i yeah, guess yeah so if we hit a king or a 10 we might actually be good um, yeah, exactly. And, and we can obviously call again. Now, turn is actually quite nice because you pick up more outs. Yeah. Also going to be a good card for for him, of course. But And he, again, picks kind of the same <laughs> approach of close to potting it on the turn. And, well, you know, given like the implied odds and uh, given the draw that we just picked up, uh, I think this kind of has to be a call. I was considering a raise but then again against a recreational guy i don't want to raise because i feel he's going to be quite strong on a board like this when he takes this line so he's going to at least have like ace king or ace jack or sometimes even ace queen and i don't think he's going to fold uh when i put him on a board like this where he can't really credit me for a lot of strong hands uh i don't think i i get enough fold equity to make it worthwhile what do you think do you think you could get away with raising here uh, I don't like raising either. I don't think I don't think um, a recreational player is ever gonna fold, fold an ace here. Yeah. I also think like like this guy. I mean, yeah, he doesn't look good, but he is sitting with eight hundred dollars, which you know he's won some stacks, which makes me think that he's probably more likely the, the type of player to just bet big with his good hands. Exactly. And he, he probably actually could have like ace queen here or like ace king or like like an actually actually a pretty good hand yeah um i mean given the fact that he has won some stacks i mean it doesn't mean a whole lot but rather than somebody who just yeah might be just clicking buttons a lot and just never have anything good uh so yeah i agree i don't think we have any fold equity i mean i'm trying to think of like what hands i'd be looking to raise here and i think i think they just have to be super value heavy hands yeah. i think i think i just assume no fold equity in this spot so even with something like King Jack of Spades or whatever. I mean, the bit the best draw you can have. I'm just pretty much calling, right. and I'm probably just raising sets and like Ace Queen plus. Yeah, me too. Uh, the only thing that I was also worried about is like if I make this call, which is kind of close because it's close to pot size, but I I think I do have enough equity on the turn still. The only problem is that I think I have to be very cautious on like an Ace of Diamonds or a Queen of Diamonds River. That would be really gross. 
I think, because like these really make his his kind of hands, because he fills up quite a bit, I guess. Um, and they yeah, also make my yeah, hands, totally so agree. It's probably like really tricky with those kind of rivers. Yeah, I mean, you're still never folding, so it would just depend on what his sizing was, rather whether we shove or, or just call. Yeah, absolutely. So now the river comes to seven of clubs, and he all of a sudden snap checks the river, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, am I supposed to bluff now, or like, could I check back king high? Um, well, I certainly, in the first, well, it didn't even occur to me to kind of give it a try and bluff, because with, given what we just talked about, I think he's going to be reasonably strong, and he might maybe just want to trick me into, you know, trying to bluff my draw, because he puts me on a flush draw. He bets pot on the flop, pods on the turn. You know, even recreational players at this level, they feel like they're charging the draws, and then when the draw busts, they kind of might want to give me a chance to bluff at it. So I felt like, you know, just check it back. Would you do anything else? Uh, no, I, I totally agree. I think I think bluffing this river against this guy would just be downright brutal. I yeah. mean, <laughs> I just, like, I wouldn't expect him to even fold, like, pocket kings or, like, pocket jacks. Like, and, I mean... He could put me on a flush draw so yeah, often. I think maybe, maybe he'll fold a hand, like, 8-9. Yeah. Um... But but I just think if we think about his overall range, it's just so so top pair heavy. Um, that I and I, you know, I think I'm just conceding the pot at this yeah. point. I mean we we're, we're just we're just the whole hand. We're just assuming no fold equity, trying to hit our draw. Right. And I'm just giving up one missed. Yeah, and I just found it pretty funny to see a hand like this <laughs> show up. <laughs> so he was pretty yeah, much just awesome. mashing buttons at that point, <laughs> and then didn't get yeah. there and didn't bluff it. Yeah, I mean he's sort of mashing. I mean he's not completely mashing buttons though, right? I mean he's he's firing the ace high flop with the back door flush draw, which I think is actually quite standard. Yeah. Like, then he picks up the flush draw on the turn and he barrels again. He just forces um, it with the sizing. Give, and then he, he he gives up, you know. So at least he gives up. I mean he's he's showing he's showing that he's playing at least reasonable. Like he's not just like firing off. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, blindly, madly. But he's really so betting big. I think, big he, I think on he played the hand like okay. This. Yeah, for sure. But he. I mean, his sizing was really scaring me, and I guess he was just, you know, hitting the pot button whenever he saw something, some some room for improvement, I guess. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about being in his, in his shoes on the river. Um, like, would you would you fire a bluff there if you were in his spot against against just, let's say, any standard rag? Well, to be honest, with my particular hand, or with his particular hand, I think it's a decent spot to bluff because... You know, he has six high for well, that's that's the one thing. But the other part of the thing is, uh, I will have a couple of flush draws that might pick up pairs, like maybe the ace or the queen that pair up some at some point. And if he just bets like he doesn't have to bet big uh, to represent a strong range because he did on the flop and the turn, and he certainly can make me fold a medium strength ace or a medium strength queen, which with his particular hand where he doesn't really block any draws or block anything that I could have. Um, he could get away with just betting like even a small amount, I guess. So I think betting on the river from his point of view would be okay, I guess. Wouldn't mind. Um, it. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think it's actually closer to a mandatory bluff spot. Yeah. The thing is, like, I, I don't know about betting smaller. I would probably, I would probably make a standard sizing only just because <laughs> I think, I think no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go pod. <laughs> that would be unnecessary. But I think we're gonna have hands like. Um, like some ace x of diamonds, yeah. Um, like maybe ace ten of diamonds or whatever. Um, that would probably have to fold to a reasonable bet, um, but probably wouldn't fold to like a, sm a really small bet anyway. That's right. So um, he's really. I mean, if I'm in his shoes, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many regs are going to raise like pocket eights or pocket threes at any point. I think a lot of them would just call down. Um, so I think we have to worry about sets a little bit. Uh, but obviously, the most the hand we're most worried about is ace queen. That's just never folding. Yeah. Um. But but like you said, we're gonna have some flush draws ourselves. Um. We're gonna have. Yeah, we're gonna have some aces that can fold, like ace jack. Like. I mean, if we call with ace king, we might even consider folding that, <laughs> since, since, when you really think about it, we're not really doing very well against the value range. Yeah. But. Absolutely. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just given the fact that we have some flush draws, some aces that might fold, and we would have six high. I think, I think this would it's just have to go into the have to go in the tripling range. Yeah. And like, if you're not tripling with this hand, 
you're not going to have like any bluffs ever on the river, yeah, I this, think. This is a good candidate for sure. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, I thought it was kind of an interesting or rather funny hand, so I just picked it. And we wanted to have like a losing hand and a, and a winning hand, so we have a winning hand in the end. So that's nice. Yeah, no, I think it was great. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, thanks for doing this, uh, Felix. Yeah, no um, problem. That was and, awesome. Yeah, guys, let me know what you think um, about this format. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, we'll see what we can get done in the future. Yeah, for sure. I'll so, be up for that. Yeah, this has been Frosty with Flix. Go check out his uh, social media links. I'm sure most of you guys follow his Grind It Up challenge anyways. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're posted there on the right. And uh, that'll be it. So take care, guys. Good luck at the tables. Bye.